my name is Muhammad Ali. I'm a black Islam I'm a black Muslim. I am the people's champion. Hello! I'm Carl Tart, and we're about to talk about the first black player to integrate Major League Baseball. Oh, Jackie Robinson. No! Well, Moses Fleetwood Walker. It's 1882. Moses Fleetwood Walker is a student at Oberlin College. And he's like, I'm studying law, I'm reading all these books. This is wrong. This is good. This is bad. This is hell yeah. This is hell no. But something's tearing at my heart. I gotta play baseball. I'm leaving college to do this, so it better be a good idea. So he dips. He joins the minor league team, Toledo Blue Stockings. So Fleet is playing catcher. But at this point, catchers weren't playing with mitts. He's playing with his bare hand. That shit is some extra shit. He's killing it though. So it's May 1st, 1884, and it's opening day. The Toledo Blue Stockings get invited to the newly formed American League. They were like, congratulations, white dudes and Moses. Welcome to Major League Baseball. Moses is like, I'm about to be the first black dude to ever play in Major League Baseball. This is what I wanted to do. This is why I left all, all law school and nobody can tell me different. I'm about to go out here and swing these bats, catch these balls, hit these balls, swing these bats. This is 1884. Think about this shit. This is 17 years removed from slavery. Like 17 years. Like slavery can't drink yet. Slavery can't fight in the war yet. If you text slavery a picture of your meat, you going to jail. <laughs> this, this, that's good, let's move on. So he's playing, but he's experiencing all kind of racism on the road. He's walking up to hotels and they're like, you can't sleep here. Your team can sleep here, but you can't sleep here. And he's like, what? How can I not sleep here? Like he's sleeping on park benches as a major league baseball player. Fans were terrible. And they're like, hold up. We didn't come to see no black people on this field. We came to see our thoroughbred whites. And then they get to Richmond, Virginia. The manager of the Toledo Blue Stockings gets a letter. And so he runs the Fleet's room, which Fleet's room is the park bench across the street. <laughs> and then he gets over there, he kicks the bench a couple of times, shakes it. Fleet, wake up, Fleet. Huh, huh, what? And he goes, man, you can't play the game tomorrow. I just got a letter. 75 dudes are gonna be outside waiting to beat your ass. You gotta not play tomorrow. Moses was like, I ain't taking no risks. If it is flake, I ain't, I ain't fake, flake. If it is frosted flakes. <laughs> oh my God. Now I'm drunk and this is supposed to be your show. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't play that game. He just sits out. So then they go to play against the Chicago White Stockings. Their manager, his name is Cap Anson. And Cap Anson is like, y'all jerseys is clean. And his jersey is clean, but his face is black. I'm not playing with him. And so manager from the Blue Stockings, Toledo, goes over to Cap and is like, yo, Cap, we have to play. Either you're going to take this L or we're going to play. And Cap was like, ah, I don't want to lose. All right, fine. I'll play against black dude this time, but I'll be back. And so manager of the Blue Stockings goes back over to Fleet, and he's like, Fleet, I know you're resting today, though you got to play. He's like, what? Look at my hands. My hands is the size of a donut factory. <laughs> and he's like, well, you need to play because they said they weren't going to play you because you're black. And he's like, what? Hold up. <laughs> well, I'm about to play today. They must have thought wrong because I'm about to be on that field today. My name is Fleet, and I'm about to be on my feet and bending my knees because I'm a catcher. <laughs> so, oh shit, well, we right. got it, we, do we it. good. And to make things worse, he's got a pitcher named Tony Mullane. He's like, I'm not even pitching real to this dude. I'm pitching what I want to pitch. Fleet calls slider, he throws a curve. Fleet calls curve, he throws a knuckle slide. But Fleet was so good that he had the media on his nuts. The Toledo Blade was like, Fleet is the most valuable player at catcher, at bat, than any other player. This is crazy that they're saying this about a black dude, 
who's playing in Major League Baseball. We shouldn't have no black people on this team. I don't want to play with him. Malene has the chance there to be the white savior from every movie about racism. Yeah, <laughs> the white savior. But this ain't a movie. This is real life. <laughs> so, it's 1987. No, it's not. It's 1887. And once again, he gets to Chicago, and his old friend there is waiting to greet him. And Cap was like, well, now I got a whole group of people who don't with you, and they kick him out of the game. Major League Baseball said, black people ain't finna play in this shit for a long ass time. So after that, he's like, the racism shit is too hard. I'm going back to studying and inventing shit. So basically, when Fleet left the game, that ban lasted for 63 years until Jackie Robinson gets put in the pros. What would you say the moral of this story is? If you think you got a hero, research that hero, and know who came before that hero, and pave the way for that hero. That was all great. Can we just do it one more time with your eyes open? <laughs> <laughs>
No. <laughs> you got me good. <laughs> oh. The greatest fight of all time. And the ref said, it's over. And Joe Lewis won. America won. People in America were like, even me, an ass racist American, can realize we're beating the Nazis. That's amazing. I love that guy. Hi. You won. I know. I'm trying to get up. Hold on. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> Hi, I am Asha Barnell, and today we're going to discuss the Cleveland Summit. Cheers. So, in 1964, you know, at the age of 22, Cassius Clay, he is fighting Sonny Liston. Clay is a seven to one underdog. He's not gonna win. He goes, I, you're an ugly bear. You smell like a bear. You're an ugly bear. You smell like a ugly bear. When I'm done with you, when I beat you, I'm gonna donate you to the zoo. Bam, bam, bam. He wins. Yeah, he becomes the world heavyweight champion. Right after he wins the championship, he announced, uh, my name is Muhammad Ali. I'm a black Islam, I'm a black Muslim. I am the people's champion. So the war was going on. Muhammad Ali was drafted. He was like, you know, my religion doesn't, I'm not allowed to fight in wars. This doesn't seem right. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm OK. Should I start out from the beginning? Yeah, can you start again? <laughs> um, we're going to be talking about the Clevelands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Muhammad Ali is drafted, and he says, no, I'm a conscientious subjector. Uh, my religion doesn't let me find a war. And, and then he also added, I have no quarrel with Viet Cong. Like, no Viet Cong has ever called me the N-word. N-word, no Viet Cong has ever sick dogs on me. The draft board says we, the draft board says, <laughs> too bad, sorry, we don't accept that. You have to go to the induction ceremony. Jeez, how in the f did you do that? Oh. That was like four cracks. <laughs> So he goes to the end deduction. And the officer's like, we're gonna say your name and then you have to step forward. Okay, Cassius Clay. My name is Muhammad Ali. He doesn't step forward. Cassius Clay, and he doesn't step forward. And the officer is like, do you understand what you are doing? Basically, if you don't step forward, you're committing a felony. You can serve five years in prison. Thank you, I know what I'm doing. Cassius Clay, he doesn't step forward. That day, he's stripped of his medals, his boxing title, his boxing license, and his title. OK, people in America were like, uh, this is bullshit. Like, this guy's just trying to getting, this guy's just trying to get out of going to the war. Uh, Muhammad Ali's manager calls football legend Jim Brown. And it's like, can you talk to him? Can you convince him to go to the Army? And can you not tell him I told you this? Or anyone I told you this? Uh, can you keep your mouth shut? Can you keep your mouth shut? Don't tell anyone I ever told you this. Uh, hi. Jim Brown is very shocked. He goes, this is shocking. This is a shocker. Jim Brown calls Job Wooten. He goes, uh, can you gather 10 of the most prominent top black athletes? and meet me in Cleveland. Yeah, on it. Everyone's just like, yeah, see you there. Got it, be there. We're talking to Ali, he's my hero, okay. So basically they're all like, we have all served. You know, we've been part of ROTC, we've been lieutenants of this and that. We've been in this and that military affiliated. We're served, we've served. What's going on, you know? Talked for two hours straight and just kind of talked about his religious convictions and beliefs. I stand by my religion, black Muslim religion, the nation of Islam, which is basically, I will not contribute to any war. 
That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. They face the media. Hi, media. Yeah, we thought this guy was full of shit. And this guy. Have you met Ollie? This guy. We support Ollie. Uh, we believe in him, and he's sincere, and we believe in, we validate his religious conviction. Ali was on trial. It was present in front of an all-white jury, and within 21 minutes, they found him guilty. And he's sentenced to five years. So he appealed, and he appealed, and basically gets to the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court is planning on ruling five to three against Ali. But then Justice John Harlan reads a book based on black Muslim religious doctrine. And he goes to all the justices and is like, you screwed up. This is me convincing you. I am convincing you. We screwed up. You screwed up. I screwed up. We have to change our opinion. OK, you're right. And so they anonymously evoked. Anonymous, anonymously. I have a hard word in sober, by the Anonymous. way. Anonymous? Anonymously. No, that's not the word. They uh, anonymously, um... Yeah. <laughs> anonymously. So basically, they vote for Ali to go free. He wanted to be the greatest. And eventually he would become the greatest. This is what I stand for. I don't care if you don't believe in it. I'm gonna die for it. Ali fought for his religion. He fought for his race. He fought for civil rights. He fought for, I mean, kind of everything that was going on at the time. He changed the world.